Hello everybody, it's Sanyo, engineer, MBA and investor and in today's video I want to talk about inflation. This video that I watched last night was an interview between Robert Breedlove and Tom. Obviously you, most of you know Tom if you listen to podcasts, if you go on YouTube, I'm sure you've seen this guy, uh, he's all around uh, YouTube with interviewing big, big people around all industry, all fields. And actually, he, Tom was one of the founders of Quest, you know, the Quest bars, protein bar. I'm sure some of you have seen it in grocery store and so on. So he, big, big, big interviewer, and he interviewed Robert Breedlove. Now, Robert Breedlove sort of came to the surf in recent years to be a big, big proponent of Bitcoin, right? And obviously, obviously, um, for him to come to this platform, you know, it's not just about Bitcoin, right? Tom sort of got involved with in this space due to inflation, right? And this is what I want to boil this video to. Um, but before I even do that, right? Before I even, you know, give my thoughts about what inflation is about and so on. This interview here was so perfect, guys. Like, I think everybody, everybody should stop whatever they're doing. Whether that's you're reading something, whether that is you're watching this video, whether that is, you know, watching Netflix, playing video games, doesn't matter what you're doing. You should stop everything you're doing, head to this video that we're looking at, and please do watch it. I highly recommend everybody who's watching, who uses the internet and is on YouTube to go in that video. There's a reason why this video has almost a million views in less, in just about a month after. There's a reason why. And... Robert Breedlove is so well spoken. This guy it knows what he's talking about. He's written stuff about Bitcoin, not just written, but he's he has his own um, his own videos uh, titled as "What Is Money," and he's all about that philosophy, the prince first principle thinking, right? And all paths, everything he says, everything he describes, really leads everything up to Bitcoin. Right. And it's just amazing the way he describes some of these things and the five properties of money that he believes and the vast mass masses believe, right? The money should have divisibility, durability, recognizability, portability, uh, scarcity, right? All of this, you know, all these points are so well broken out in this interview. Um, I just think it's an amazing conversation, uh, just shy of two hours. I mean, the question of what is property, right? The, the idea that you don't actually, when you talk about property, right? What makes your property, for, in the, in the, for example, a house valuable? It's your relationship with the house. It's not the house itself, right? It could be your car, table, kitchen table, your coffee cup, whatever it is. The property itself is not as valuable as your relationship to it, right? And the idea that the government or some sort of authorities they let you have that relationship with property because you know that it was, if you have that house if it's under your name no one can steal it from you and if someone does steal it from you you can call basically the cops right you can call the authorities and basically have that criminal outside of your home right because that person is basically committing theft on your home now I love this interview because it doesn't actually talk about Bitcoin up until like halfway into the interview. And the reason why this is done is because Breedlove, what he's trying to do, he's trying to sort of set the stage there and explain to all people in this, in this space, including people that are very expert, who are so into Bitcoin, and to remind them why they're into Bitcoin. And obviously, attacking all other extreme, which is obviously the people that are getting into this space or people that don't even know what Bitcoin is about, right? The idea of central banks, right? It's just mind boggling, guys, that the Federal Reserve in US is not even a government entity, right? The idea that the Federal Reserve did not exist up until the early 20th century. The idea that we debased the US dollar from gold in 1971, from the Nixon era, all of that is explored in that interview and I just find it mind boggling. I was watching this last night guys and I couldn't even sleep. I'll be honest with you guys. I couldn't even sleep. It was so, 
when you guys, you know, get, I'm sure all of you have been through these types of moments where you're listening to something, you're reading something, you're watching something, and that light bulb just comes up, right? And these are things that I've sort of watched and read over the years, right? It's not like I've, this is something revolutionary. But again, this interview condensed everything so well. And it, I just give, I want to give the props to Tom here. There's a reason why this guy has 2.5 million subscribers on YouTube. There's a reason why this guy is a, uh, I think I'm pretty sure he's a billionaire at this point. Um, there's a really the reason why, right? Um, I just love this interview. I highly recommend you guys to stop everything you're doing and watch that interview and leave me in comments below what you guys think. Inflation is a serious topic, guys. It doesn't matter if you're supporter or not supporter of Bitcoin. What matters is your awareness about inflation, right? Governments that are telling us that inflation is 6% a year is completely, completely a lie. It's false, right? This is, these are numbers that are sort of picked in a basket of goods, specifically by entities. So for example, in some cases, you don't even have home and, home and houses prices in the inflation figures. So your 6% figure that comes out, for example, in Canada, we had the largest inflation in like 20 years, some crazy like that recently, and they stated it as 6%. They didn't even, they don't include home prices, for example. They don't include certain assets, good. They only include specific assets and they're all listed, right? This is not like something that, that you have to like, you know, ask someone in the government to figure it out, right? These are not, these are all public, but the thing is the way these, these numbers are marketed, the way these are communicated to you, we've all seen our gas prices go up 20 to 30%. Gas prices, right? Your inflation on your grocery bills, right? Just go in your breakfast. For people that go to eat breakfast, breakfast every week, right? Tell me, you know, your fran my, my favorite franchise in Montreal, the same breakfast, breakfast that cost in $12.99 two years ago, Today it costs $16.99. That is a large increase, guys. That is not 6%. That is not 6%, right? And that's just a simple, silly example. I didn't even talk about all of that, the quote unquote pandemic taxes, COVID taxes, whatever you want to call them. I didn't even talk about the labor shortage. I didn't even talk about employment. I didn't even talk about the money printing. I'm not even talking about all of that, right? Just focus back on your life, right? And look at your bills. And although it may feel good that certain of your assets, including your home or stocks have gone up, just realize that you will eventually buy another home or a, upgrade your home or buy stocks or upgrade your stocks. And all of them, all of them would have experienced inflation. You have to think about that guys. We're all humans, right? You can't just think about yourself and you can't just think the time is limited, right? This is this is an ongoing process, right? And it's not just you, right? You gotta think about other people around you, right? It's not just you or your significant other or maybe your close family, right? Your friends, your community, you know, the lower income families around the world and specifically in North America as well, right? Obviously, and even in developed nation, you know, I haven't even talked about less developed nation here. The quality gap, inequality gap increasing every single day as you, Experience inflation, guys. We've all seen what inflation has happened in places like Zimbabwe, Venezuela. We've all we're all witnessing what's happening in Turkey, what happened in Lebanon. These are all nations, guys. And you could make arguments that you know these are nations that were poorly run, these governments that weren't run properly. And I totally agree with you. And I think there are many other factors involved here. I don't think it's as simple as just seeing fiat money will eventually no, like just fiat, the idea of fiat money brings um, inequality. I don't think it's as simple as that, but at the same time, human have emotions, have feelings. Human greed is a thing. You gotta think about central banks, they're printing unlimited money. What's going on there? You know, the question I often ask people, and this is where people, you know, start thinking and the light bulb comes up, it's, why are we paying taxes if we can just print money unlimited? And your first guess would be like, well, you know, with the taxes, we can pay uh, social services programs. 
I do want to mention to you that in US, all taxes from all income taxes from all citizens, I don't have the stats in front of me, but I saw that somewhere. You can Google that on your own, right? Don't take my word for, for granted here, but it's a very minor percentage of just paying the social services employees. All taxes on income just pays a fraction of what you need to pay for social services employees. So all these bureaucrats salaries are paid just a fraction of taxes. We've all seen what happened, what happened with the pandemic with quant QE uh, injected in systems all around the world. It's not just the US, right? Canada, we've seen it. Uh, in, in England, we've seen it, right? In Australia, in, in, in all sorts of countries, we've seen that QE, we've seen inflation, we've seen pre printing of fiat. And all roads lead to Bitcoin, guys. Eventually, all ro roads lead to Bitcoin because for the first time ever in human history, you have an asset, an asset that is limited in supply and demand could be unlimited. We don't know. If for the first time in human history, we have an asset that follows certain protocols, no matter what happens. And for the first time in human history, we have an asset that no one can confiscate. No one can confiscate. This is very powerful. Your home, people can confiscate. Your stocks, people can confiscate. In fact, stocks, stocks companies can dilute their stocks. Anything you're talking about, your art, someone can just come in and steal it. Your car, someone can crash it. Like Anything can happen with any of your assets except, except Bitcoin. Now, obviously, there's custody wallets, there's not custodial wallets, there's cold storage. There's a whole you know, rabbit hole of that. We won't get into that in this video. But the point is that Bitcoin for the first time ever allows that independent from all state, from all authorities. And it's, it's, in my opinion, the liberty ticket to freedom. It's the ticket to freedom. It is liberty. It is a hedge against corruption, against greed, human greed. It's a hedge against the idea of printing unlimited and deflate, uh, I'm sorry, uh, devalue your money, your hard-earned money, right? And again, you guys gotta do your own research. You guys know I've posted, published videos about Bitcoin in the past, so this is not something new, but just this interview was mind-boggling, guys. I highly recommend you guys to watch it. Let me know what you guys think about inflation. We don't have to talk about Bitcoin in this video. Yes, I'm bringing up Bitcoin because all, like I said, all roads lead to Bitcoin. I know a lot of people who were anti-Bitcoin, skeptic of Bitcoin, recently got into Bitcoin specifically about the topic of inflation. You're seeing your hard-earned money just lose value every single day, literally every single day, especially since the last two years. Things have accelerated. And again, having these conversations are very, very tough. I think people, you know, they don't want to have these conversations. And I understand, you know, I understand. Like, it's not a fun conversation to have, right? You, we all have our day jobs. You know, we all have, you know, to take care of our family, our friends and loved ones. It's very stressful to even worry about these types of topics. But it's a topic you got to have a conversation about, right? You got to sit down with your significant other, with your family, your friends. You got to sit down and say, what is going on with inflation? And that's what I'm doing with you guys. What is going on here? Like your breakfast, your grocery bill, all goods and services have gone up. And I would argue that the quality has gone down. And I'm just going to end this video like this because I could go honestly for hours and hours here. I've had conversation with people over the years about inflation. My thesis has gone just solidified over the last two years. And to me, Bitcoin, I think it's here to stay. But that's just my opinion. You will tell me what you guys think in the comments below. Like the video if you found value from it. Subscribe if you have not. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, hopefully you guys found some value from it. And maybe express yourself in the comments as to what you are thinking about inflation, what you're seeing in your respective region, country, nation. Let me know and hopefully we can spun off a discussion. Thank you so much for watching and have a beautiful Thursday. Thank you.